neither or perhaps both so we wait pretty much I guess it wouldn't make much difference if we knew one way or the other not really she shows up when she shows up this is her home after all it's hard to think of a universe as a home mama MT for some a universe isn't big enough like your son a bathtub is too big for the likes of him. He just hasn't figured that out yet. Future Orville seems to have come to that realization, more or less. Perhaps. He still has a chip on his shoulder. One that should have been knocked off centuries ago. It's his way or the highway. That will never change. It's why he will forever be a failure. With pride goes failure. Orville, the Overseer, Ernest Navigo. Waterford has seen its share of tyrants who have quickly risen and just as quickly fallen. Strange that one little town should draw so much wickedness. Almost like there was a magnetic undercurrent to the place that draws in evil. You are closer to the truth than you realize, Mother M.P. Wickedness runs with the water. The current, like electricity, pulls the evil in. I do not understand. I could use some clarification myself, Mr. Serial. Waterford has many lakes, many rivers, and its channels run wild. They are all connected to other bodies of water across the state. The Great Lakes of Michigan. Correct. Those lakes connect to the Atlantic Ocean. The ocean connects to the world's water supply. Thus, Waterford connects to the world through its many, many tiny lakes. It's a game of pool. Hit the right spot on the white ball, and the rest of the balls will do as you want. What better place to control the world than a small town that's tied into the entire globe? See how simple it is? Not really. The theory may be simple. The practical matter of taking over a planet, that is a stretch for me. You've seen bourbon at the refrigerator, haven't you, Jingles? Sure, Mama MT, many times. You've heard me yelling at him after he's drunk from the milk bottle. Endlessly. Why do you think I yell at him? He leaves his germs all over the milk bottle. Not only on the milk bottle, but in the milk itself. If I'm following Mr. Serial correctly, all someone would have to do is take a pot shot at Waterford, leave some germs in a lake, and then the whole planet would be polluted. Yikes! Which has happened? What? What do you mean? Your son, Mother M.D. He is on a mission for me now. He attempts to protect the soul of Waterford, as well as proclaim the salvation of all universes. My son? In his current temporal incarnation. I think I'm going to faint. I've got you, Mama M.T. Fear not. He is in good hands. Mine. There. You see, Mama M.T.? Ariel has everything under control. My son, the planet saver. Who would have dreamed it possible? Which leaves us with the matter at hand. Young Ali Bright and his former master. 
the overseer. Oh, is he, Ariel? Stubborn, silent, and sulky. Is there any chance of reclamation? If there is, it has not been found within him as of yet. He is biding his time, waiting for a chance to escape. Does he have any memory of his life before he became the overseer? I cannot say for certain. If there are scraps of that life within him, they have not been made known to me as legitimate. He was a simple mortal with a normal life before his unfortunate accident involving my son. If that part of him still exists, it might prove to be the opening you have been searching for. A way to cut the tie between demon and host. What do you suggest, Mother M.T.? It is almost Thanksgiving. Mama M.T., you don't mean... Why not? It's worked on others. But here? Now? Of all places? I love them just as much as the next person, if not more. But they are only movies. Sometimes the simplest answer is the best one. We don't have to overthink this, Jingles. Let's just load the projector and let them roll. With the mistress's permission, of course. By all means, I love a good movie. All right, I'll do it. I don't understand it, but I'll do it. Same as always. You're the projectionist, Jingles. It's at your discretion. Um, where do I set up, Miss Ariel? Simply aim the projector in the area directly in front of us. The images will be shown inside the Overseer's cell. For him, it will be a rare treat. Okay, this will definitely be a sight to see. of a holiday and home. Helping make ready a celebration is part of the fun. Especially for one of the nicest days of the year. Thanksgiving. in the air and the smell of turkey mmm that does look good Thanksgiving is a day for the best of everything. And friends invited to dinner. Remember, the pilgrims had only rough tables on which to serve the first Thanksgiving feast, yet it was shared with friendly Indians.
good to share a holiday with friends. And it is good to have friends like to come to our home. Good manners make people happy, and a good table manners make eating together a happy time. We are thankful for our home and our happy meal. We are glad we have good table manners and know what to do with a napkin. And how to use a spoon in eating soup easily without noise. Wouldn't be Thanksgiving without turkey. We know mother knows how to cook it. And father knows how to carve it. It is fine to know how to sit up and watch it being carved. holiday plate. At the first Thanksgiving dinner, the Indians didn't eat turkey with a fork. But it is easy to learn to use one the right way, to take small mouthfuls, to butter and eat bread in small bites, so we never have to talk with food in our mouths. It is good to have learned to chew with lips closed, and know when to take a drink. Table manners keep our meals happy meal, and those who eat with us happy. Learning to use a knife the right way takes practice, yet each time we do, it becomes easier. What to do with a knife and fork, even when finished using them, is part of eating well. Holidays are days to be glad. 
And all good manners are ways to make people glad. We like to offer help, or to help when asked. Nice to talk with others and to know when to wait and listen. We are glad to eat neatly without spots. Holidays are fun. of a celebration. It is fine to have learned so much and to have so much in our home to make holiday celebrations happy. A family connection is important in all of our lives. It's one of the things Ali needs most. I dare say even the overseer could benefit from a few lessons in etiquette. His heart, however, does not seem to have been moved very much by the message of the film. If anything, it seems to have made him more agitated. What we most desire are the things we cannot have. For the likes of the overseer, a family gathering is that which is furthest from him. The film may have moved him far more than you realize. And the kids at school always said the film was outdated and useless. Kids can be cruel, immature, and short-sighted. Fortunately, they grow up. Well, most of them do. Emphasize most. What about the overseer, Mama MT? Uncertain. We cannot approach him now. Like a spoiled child, he is still filled with pride, selfishness, and greed. The string that holds the demon in place needs to be cut, that the more human side of his duality may surface again. Show the second film? Go for it, Jiggles. What have we got to lose? I wonder, Mama MT. With the Overseer being our only source of information regarding what he did to Ali, it's not what we have to lose, but who? Excellent observation, Jingles, for if the tie that binds the two personalities together is not eventually cut in entirety, one will ultimately perish completely. Which one, Ariel? The one that loses the tug of war.
I'm Bill Johnson. Around here, they just call me Dad. I've been trying to read, but I just can't seem to do it. I keep thinking about today, Thanksgiving Day. We Johnsons had a good Thanksgiving, the best we've ever had. And I can't help thinking that what made it better was a feeling, a real feeling of thankfulness. And that's odd, too, when you consider the shape things were in when I got home from work yesterday. Kids, Dick and Tommy and Susan, were all home from school. And of course, Mother and the baby were there. As kids will, mine were living tomorrow right along with today, looking forward to Thanksgiving. And like most men, I'm glad it was Mother instead of me who had to break the news to them. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Mmm, turkey and dressing and pie and cake. And fruit salad and whipped cream and cranberries. Gee, I can hardly wait. Me too. Well, you know, children, we've had a lot of expenses this month, and, well, your father and I thought that... Well, the truth of the matter is, there just won't be any turkey this year. No turkey for Thanksgiving? Oh, I'm going to make a pumpkin pie. We'll have plenty to eat, but, well, we'll just have to get along without turkey. Mom, you don't mean it. It won't be Thanksgiving at all. Even the pilgrims had a feast. After all, isn't that what Thanksgiving's for? I don't think it's fair. And it was right there that I came in, right in the thick of it. Hello, everybody. Hi, Father. Hello, Mother, Hi. Dick, Susan. Well, what's been going on around here? What's the matter with everybody, anyway? Mom says we're not going to have any Thanksgiving. No turkey, no good thing. A fat lot we're going to have to be thankful for. Oh, I don't think you kids really mean that. We do, too. We've always had turkey for Thanksgiving. Yes, and everybody else in the block's going to have it this year. Same as always. Yes, we've always had turkey, just as a lot of Americans have had it, and we'll keep on having it. Turkey on Thanksgiving is a great American tradition. But what you kids are saying makes it sound as if the turkey's the only thing we had to be thankful for. Well, gee whiz, no, Dad. It's not that at all. Oh, I know, Dick. With turkey, it's easy to lose sight of what Thanksgiving really means. And don't think we're just making excuses because we don't have any turkey this year. We, well, we know it'll mean a lot more to us the next time we do have it. Well, sure. Suppose we don't have a bang-up feast. We're still a lot better off than the pilgrims. That's it, Dick. Now, do you other kids see what Dick's trying to say? Turkey or no turkey, we've still got all the freedoms and privileges the pilgrims gave us. And out of those privileges have come a lot of things. Things the pilgrims never even dreamed of. Why, we could make a list a mile long. Why don't we do it? But now, hold on a minute. You've got the idea, but it isn't something you can write down like, well, like a grocery list. You've got to feel it down deep before you can really be thankful for anything. I tell you what let's do. And let's take a little more time to think this over. When you get right down to it, there are some pretty tough decisions in making up your mind what means the most to you. Your life? Sure, that's one thing you can't get along without. But do you know that there are some places in the world today where you have to get along without just about everything else? Golly, Daddy. I guess I kind of got carried away. But I'll bet you one thing. If we really think over what we have to be thankful for, when we sit down to whatever Mother fixes to eat tomorrow, we'll be one family in America that will really have a Thanksgiving dinner. Well, that's how it got started. The Johnsons didn't have any turkey. And the kids, no, I mean everybody, likes to make something special out of a special day. So we fell back on something as old as the Pilgrims toting up the common, ordinary blessings that we had to be thankful for. That night, I'd see Dick there building his model airplane and Susan just playing. Only they weren't just playing. They were mulling things over, thinking big thoughts for such young heads. And as for Mother and Tom and baby Janet, and yes, me too, it was as if we had our eyes open for the first time, things there were to appreciate in just any ordinary day in America. When we took our places around the table and we were ready. And then, well, we all knew it.
There are some things you just can't say. But everybody in his own way knew what he had to be thankful for and that this was the time to think about it. Tom was first. I am thankful for getting plenty to eat all the time with extras that count, like cookies and milk after school. Like Mom says, I'm hungry all the time anyway, and if I didn't live in a country where there was plenty to go around, golly. And I'm thankful for the free public library where I can get books about adventure. Jack London, Richard Halliburton. Gee, the way they tell a story is as good as being there yourself. And it's free with only a library card. Yes, Tommy thought about some of the things he ought to be glad for all the time. And somehow turkey and trimming seemed to matter a whole lot less than he thought they did yesterday. Well, then it was Susan's turn. Susan's a happy-go-lucky kid. You'd never credit her with thinking beyond her dolls, but she got right into the spirit of it. I am thankful we have what we need to wear. Though Mother says it's hard to keep up with us, we grow so fast. I never thought before how many clothes it takes for all kinds of weather, or how it would be to have to do without the right ones. I'm glad to be able to go to Sunday school, or go to any church I want, any Sunday. I'm thankful for my mother and daddy, that they are here with us, that both of them aren't too worried about things to take time to have fun with us. I'm glad we're a family, that families are still important in America. I guess Dick, being the oldest, was having some pretty serious thoughts. I am thankful for being able to get an education, for living where schools, all schools, open their doors to a guy who wants to learn where school books are studied instead of burned, where a guy is rated by how much he knows and the community is rated by how well it teaches him. I'm glad I've got a chance to play, batting a ball around once in a while, stuff like that. I'm glad it's fun growing up in America. Sure, baby Janet's too young to understand the big word Thanksgiving. She's too little even to tell us the things that make her happy. But we can tell, and maybe she's thinking about them now. Maybe she's thinking about the fun of splashing around in the tub and about how good it feels to be clean. About playtime with mother and the security she feels in mother's arms. And as for mother, seems she's always working, cooking, ironing, tending children, daylight to dark. What does she have to be thankful for? I am thankful that my children had the privilege of being born safely and of growing up healthy and strong. I'm thankful that I have the privilege of guiding them as they become useful men and women. And I'm thankful for all the things our American system makes possible for the Smiths and the Browns and the Johnsons, for washing machines, hot water out of a tap, and a telephone to call the doctor when one of the family is sick. A car to get Dad to work. Yes, I'm thankful for all the things free people working together can produce. I'm thankful that when my neighbor drops in to borrow a cup of flour, we've got the right to talk about anything we want to. The parent-teacher project, the new mayor, or, or Jane Jones hat. And last of all, I'm truly thankful for the peace of mind that Dad's job brings, for knowing that even though there are lots of luxuries we can't afford, there still will always be enough to go around for the things we have to have. I'm glad Dad doesn't work slave hours, that there are evenings and Sundays and vacations when we can all be together. That's Mother for you grateful for what America means to her family. And now for me. I've got so many things to be thankful for. I'm thankful for this house. It may need a coat of paint, it has a mortgage, but it's ours, a place where we can be together in privacy. And I'm thankful for the thing that makes this house our home, the happiness here, 
Not just today or on Christmas morning, but on a day-to-day -day basis all through the year. For knowing that a knock on our door means nothing to fear. A friend calling, or maybe a bill collector, or a kid selling magazines. You never know what to expect. But you can count on one thing. It's not going to be some political gangster coming to drag one of us off to jail because we believe in freedom. And I'm glad that that freedom we've got lets me choose the kind of work I like and can do best. Taking a sluggish motor and making it hum again. Makes me feel that somebody got to his work or wherever he had to go just because of me. And feeling like that gives me a lot of satisfaction. And I'm thankful for my newspaper. Just a few cents worth of printer's ink and paper, but more valuable than any amount of money. Because in it, the editor's got the privilege of printing what he thinks. And I've got the privilege of agreeing with him or not, however the facts strike me. And both of us, the editor and I, have the right to act on our opinions on election day, to vote for the principles we believe in. And finally, I'm thankful for being able to believe, in spite of everything, that somehow, someway, the unity we've got here in the Johnson family will someday spread to men and nations throughout the world. For all these things, we are truly and humbly thankful. Amen. What's going on, Ariel? This looks like some bad Christmas horror movie. It very well may be, Mother Empty. A birth, a death, nothing in between. Perhaps both? Perhaps, Jinkos, you are a wise giraffe. Thank you for not calling me a little one. The captain's terminology is often suspect, as it relates to all of us. He has several pet names for me as well. Indeed. I'm sure I'll hear of them someday. The captain and I, our paths do seem to cross quite often, unfortunately. It is time. For what? Judgment. Whose? His. <laughs> We are our own worst judges. If we see ourselves with the eyes of truth, indeed we are. The question is, will the overseer see himself with those eyes? Or will the demon slip by the emerald shades at the last minute? This could be the horse of a different color. If so, your trip here will have been in vain. Time will tell. Now. I don't believe it. How did it happen, Ariel? Who won the day? Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Here in his love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be the appropriation for our sins. Beloved, 
If God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God, who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Je Jesus Christ. Jingles, Mother Empty, you just heard his name.